Hey everyone, it's Michael Klepik here. Today we're talking about H2S scrubbers, an essential tool for removing hydrogen sulfide, H2S, from industrial emissions. We'll cover everything from the design and operational principles to packed bed systems, tank solutions, and different types of media. Let's get started. What is hydrogen sulfide, H2S? Hydrogen sulfide is a toxic and corrosive gas, often recognized by its rotten egg smell. However, despite its detectable odor, prolonged exposure can desensitize your sense of smell, making it an unreliable safety indicator. H2S can be found in several industries, and its harmful effects range from irritating the respiratory system at low concentrations to causing unconsciousness, convulsions, and even death at high levels. It also poses serious risks to equipment, causing corrosion and material degradation. Sources of H2S emissions. H2S emissions come from various industrial processes such as oil and gas. Hydrogen sulfide is released during the extraction and refining of oil and natural gas. Chemical processing. It is a byproduct of sulfuric acid production and other sulfur-related chemical processes. Pulp and paper. The cooking of wood pulp using the sulfate method releases significant H2S emissions. Metallurgy. H2S is emitted when sulfide ores are roasted during metal processing. Wastewater treatment. Anaerobic decomposition of organic waste produces hydrogen sulfide. Biogas production. Biogas facilities also release H2S during the anaerobic digestion of organic materials. Coke plants. Hydrogen sulfide is emitted during coal pyrolysis in coke production. Because of its toxicity, H2S emissions must be treated and controlled using scrubbers to prevent harm to workers, the public, and the environment. H2S scrubber design. Now, let's talk about the design of an H2S scrubber. Pollutant removal requirements. The first step in designing an H2S scrubber is identifying the level of pollutant removal required. This involves analyzing the concentration and volume of H2S in the gas stream and determining the desired purification efficiency. Dimensions of the scrubber The height and diameter of the scrubber must be calculated based on the volume of gas to be treated. These dimensions ensure that the gas has sufficient contact time with the absorbing liquid for effective removal of H2S. Airflow rate The airflow rate is a critical factor in scrubber design. It determines the cross-sectional area of the scrubber column, ensuring optimal flow conditions while minimizing pressure drop. Hydrodynamic calculations the scrubber's hydrodynamic characteristics, including air and liquid velocities and the mass transfer coefficient, must be calculated. The mass transfer coefficient measures how effectively H2S is absorbed by the liquid, influencing the height of the packing layer in the scrubber. Absorbent flow rate. Calculating the absorbent flow rate is vital for achieving the required level of purification. The absorbent reacts with H2S and removes it from the air. The type of packing material used in the scrubber, such as rashig rings or pol rings, enhances the gas-liquid contact area, improving the system's efficiency. Corrosion resistance. Given H2S's corrosive properties, scrubbers must be made of durable, chemically resistant materials. For example, stainless steel is often used for the scrubber's body while plastic or ceramic is used for internal components. Liquid discharge systems. The scrubber must also have a system to discharge the spent scrubbing liquid. This system must be designed to prevent clogs and ensure smooth operation. Monitoring efficiency. Throughout the design process, the system's efficiency is evaluated by comparing its pollutant removal capabilities to industry standards. Ease of maintenance. The scrubber should allow easy access to internal components for regular cleaning and maintenance, ensuring long-term reliability and performance. Control systems. 
The scrubber should be equipped with sensors and control systems that monitor key parameters like pressure, temperature, airflow, pH, and H2S concentrations. This helps maintain optimal operating conditions and alerts operators to any deviations. How does an H2S scrubber work? The operational principles of an H2S scrubber are straightforward. The scrubber removes H2S from the gas stream through a chemical reaction with a liquid absorbent. Here's how it works. Gas entry. The H2S-laden gas enters the scrubber and flows upward through a packed bed of material. Chemical reaction. As the gas passes through, it comes into contact with a scrubbing liquid, often sodium hydroxide, which reacts with the H2S to form less harmful compounds like sulfides and hydrosulfides. Absorption process. The packed bed increases the contact time between the gas and liquid, improving the absorption of H2S. The liquid circulates within the scrubber, maintaining continuous purification. Spent liquid collection. After absorbing the H2S, the scrubbing liquid is collected, treated, or disposed of, depending on the process requirements. The packed bed plays a vital role in increasing the surface area for gas-liquid contact, which improves the overall efficiency of the scrubber. Maintaining proper pH levels and temperature is critical for ensuring the scrubbing solution remains effective over time. Packed bed systems. Now, let's talk about packed bed systems, one of the most common configurations for H2S scrubbers. These systems use specially designed packing materials like PAL rings, burl saddles, or interlocks rings to increase the surface area for gas-liquid contact. Packed bed scrubbers are highly efficient because they allow for better mass transfer between the gas and liquid phases. The packing material ensures that the scrubbing liquid is evenly distributed throughout the system, preventing any dead zones or uneven flow. These systems are ideal for industries like oil and gas, chemical processing, and food production, where they help control harmful emissions and protect the environment. Tank solutions. In addition to packed bed systems, tank solutions are another key element in H2S scrubbers. The tank holds the scrubbing liquid and is connected to the scrubber to allow for continuous circulation of the fluid. Maintaining the right fluid levels and pH in the tank is essential for effective scrubbing. If the system processes large volumes of gas or contaminants, multiple tanks may be used in a series, allowing for more extensive treatment. In these cases, the scrubber may also have a secondary filtration system to remove solid particles before they enter the tank. Types of scrubbing media Choosing the right scrubbing media is critical for the scrubber's performance. There are several types of media used in H2S scrubbers. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH. One of the most common scrubbing solutions, NaOH reacts with H2S to form non-hazardous byproducts like sodium sulfide. Activated carbon, sometimes used in dry scrubbers, activated carbon adsorbs H2S onto its surface. Iron-based media, these media react with H2S to form iron sulfide, which can be removed and regenerated for reuse. Limestone, KCO3. Often used in chemical industries, limestone helps neutralize acidic gases like H2S. That wraps up today's overview of H2S scrubbers. These systems are critical for controlling harmful emissions in industries like oil and gas, chemical processing, and wastewater treatment. From design and operational principles to packed bed systems, and scrubbing media, H2S scrubbers ensure compliance with environmental standards while protecting equipment and workers. If you need more information about H2S scrubbers or are looking to install a system, reach out to Torch Air. We're here to help with all your air purification needs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.